Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see by the title of this video, this is a continuation of my hysterectomy recovery series. I have received a ton of comments about where I am now and if I will do a an update, so that's what I'm doing for you today. Now, keep in mind, I've also received comments that very few and far between, but I have received comments on my videos that have kind of stated like this is a little dramatic like I had my hysterectomy and I didn't experience these things and the first thing I can say to that is everybody's journey is completely different. I know people that have had a recovery that has been a hundred million times more difficult than mine and people that have had a journey that has been less difficult than mine. I also want to point out that I am very in tune with my body and because I had planned to do these videos I was even more so in tune with my body. So with that being said sometimes when I mention that I feel something or I have this like slight ache or pain or whatever if I were not paying attention and just going about my day, most likely I would not have noticed it, but because I'm paying attention to every little thing, because I know that someone else can feel that little thing on a much larger scale, I mention it just so that people know this can happen, and if this happens to you, this is either normal or not normal according to my doctor. So with all of that being said, we're just going to jump right into my update, but just keep in mind that my journey is not your journey and we are going to experience very different or possibly very similar things. The very first thing that I wrote down for this video is the first thing I wrote down because it is the most present, it's the most obvious and probably out of the list, just the one that I noticed the most and I think has had the biggest impact and that is discomfort during sex. And when I say discomfort, I don't mean pain, I don't mean like it's excruciating pain or that it's a bad experience because that is not the case at all and in some ways it has actually improved, it's gotten better. However, usually starting out like in the beginning, it is kind of something that my body feels like it has to adjust and it gets better the longer that it goes on. And also I notice that these pains are increased during my ovulation period and my husband Husband has also mentioned that he can tell when I'm ovulating so and ovulating I'll get into that later but um, it's just everything down there is a little more sensitive sometimes it feels a little bit inflamed and this is not abnormal you are taking something in your body and essentially sewing a sling and that becomes something that is irritated whatever but it's something that I have experienced but it's not something that has made it painful or a bad experience it's just something that has changed and I will see I guess the longer I go on if that eventually goes away or if it stays that way I have heard I've read I've watched videos that in the beginning and in the beginning that can be you know for everybody it's different but it can be kind of irritated it's just your body getting used to something new it's your body trying to heal on the inside it's something that I am experiencing currently now regarding the thing that I touched on just a moment ago with ovulation, I do still have my ovaries. So I don't know if this is common knowledge. I think I'm finding out that a lot of women don't realize that this stuff happens. When you still have your ovaries, you are still going through the things that your body was going through before. So essentially, you are still ovulating. So I can feel every single month when I am on my time, which before that would have been when I started my period and I never felt these things before but now I can feel the exact location of where my ovaries are and I feel it every single month around the same time I go through a cycle so I can feel like little pings uh, on the side of my pelvis area and that's followed by like cramping a certain amount of days and my belly being swollen a certain amount of days so I'm still going through all that process and in addition to that I think or maybe I become more aware that I am dealing with more like hormonal fluctuations. So when I start to feel my ovaries, I start to feel emotional and I feel like I'm just more sensitive overall. I listen to me. I mean, I've always been, I've always been very sensitive, very sensitive to people's energy and to stuff around me, but now it just feels like super heightened. I'm more aware of when I am upset with my husband or I'm feeling impatient with my kids. I feel like I'm a little less in control of my emotions, but because I am aware of that, I'm able to act accordingly. 
Originally, when I went into the doctor for all of my issues, the reason that I went in and that I went to my doctor and then she sent me to a specialist is because I was peeing all the time. I was peeing frequently, I was peeing urgently, it was a constant pain. I could not go more than 10 minutes without having to pee. I'm happy to say that since the surgery, I pee much less often. I don't really track, you know, on my phone or, or watch or anything, but I would say I maybe pee once or twice in an hour. I can go on road trips now without having to pee every 10 minutes because it got to the point where I was so anxious about having to pee that then I had to pee more. I have gone from waking up 10 to 12 times a night to now waking up about once or twice a night depending and sometimes I don't wake up at all. So for that reason alone, I would say that 100% this surgery was worth it for me because that was really controlling my life. On the other side of that, my doctor was hopeful that I would have an increase in bowel movements because he said my bladder, um, my uterus was so inflamed and so tilted that it was pushing up against my rectum. And that has, I haven't noticed any difference. I mean, I told him originally that I didn't think it was being affected currently, like with my uterus. So I don't know that there has been much of a change. I'm still pretty regular. I probably go two to three times a day. Uh, but maybe that is more because in the past I did go like every few days or once a day if I was lucky. But that was also before I switched to a plant-based diet and before I went gluten-free. So I can't really say if the two things are related. And then just in terms of how I am doing day to day, I definitely have less bloating and less cramping. I do feel cramping again when I'm going through like the ovulation period, but day to day my stomach is not bloating up every day. Um, I don't know if that has to do with just my uterus being like a vital thing and, and having to pee all the time and just being inflamed and irritated, but I'm definitely not bloating or cramping anymore. I'm pretty normal. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I go to bed just about the same consistently, whereas before I would wake up pretty flat and pretty calm and not irritated, and then by the nighttime, I had looked like I gained like five to 10 pounds in a day. Lastly, something that I never would have known had I not started working out, I just started a super intense workout program for the first time since my surgery. I have been swimming up to this point, but this is the first time I've gotten back into a workout that has really challenged my body and been super difficult. And I will say that I, the first like four days, I had this crazy pain in my pelvis area that I've never experienced in my life. It almost felt like I had a set of abs all the way down to like my vagina. Like it felt like my abs went from the top of my core all the way down and I was so sore in the pelvis to the point that I was a little bit concerned and I had considered contacting my doctor. And then I just kind of realized that now I have all this scar tissue. So it's similar to a woman who has a C-section. Sometimes when you have a C-section and you have your stomach cut open, for the rest of your life, you can have a little bit of pain or discomfort in that area just because of how the body healed. So for now, I'm not thinking too much into it. I think it has to do with scar tissue. It's a feeling that my body has not gotten used to. Um, and now a few days later, I'm not feeling it anymore. So it's something I will keep my eyes on, but I'm not worrying about it currently. And those are all things that I'm experiencing about nine months out from my hysterectomy. If you are interested in why I had a hysterectomy or you know the symptoms I was experiencing previously, I will link below and here somewhere the very first video of the series. But I'm going to leave this video with my scar update. I'm just gonna show you how the scar is healed and I will see you guys in the next video. Do not forget if you have questions, please leave them down below and share these videos with any of your hister sisters that feel like maybe they are in this journey alone or in any groups that you're in. Whatever you want to do, feel free to share if you think that they will help somebody. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!